Great, Elaine. If you could say it all again, that would be okay. that would be perfect. Thank you very much. All right. So, in my dream, yes, I'm thank in you. my normal office space, which is my office is a converted bathroom cubicle. So it is quite small. It is completely white. It's not that light. Um, it's lit by these LED lights in the ceiling, um, and it still has bathroom written on the door um and so it's quite a it's quite a small i love it as a space but it's quite a small space and it's dominated by um my kind of big desk vulnerable and extra chair um which is kind of large and black mesh mm. and so you kind of have to roll it forward under the desk in order to be able to open the door behind you so i'm sitting in my normal desk space is kind of um an inbuilt bench desk opposite the door that goes down also along the right hand side of the office um, and the one thing that's really unusual about it in terms of me sitting in my space is that I have one of my big purple furry blankets that I normally have on my sofa across my knees and kind of trailing out on the floor um, which kind of means that I'm always trapped in my space because I can't wheel my chair because it will get um, kind of trapped in the blanket so my desk itself is completely clear which never happens in my world um, it's clear of all my normal working stuff the only stuff that's still there are kind of the post-it notes on the walls that tell me what I'm doing and I have a like a shoe per day calendar which is sitting on my bookcase mm. which is still then the shelves above my head um, apart from that I've got my in tray is being replaced by a um, scientific water bowl, which mm. is open and, and obviously boiling. And there are kind of a set of 12 quail eggs that are in what we call a flotation um, device, which is basically a foam that floats, a foam holder that floats that normally you put um, different shoots of reagents into, but instead of the reagent, we've got your legs within it and then I've got some kind of lab timers that are running um, along kind of next door to it. I've got a box of gloves, so like medical gloves we wear, so they're blue um, nitrile, so latex free gloves that are sitting there. And as kind of the dream starts, I am sitting in my chair wearing some blue gloves. I've got some eggs in front of me that I am trying to peel whilst wearing these gloves um, and it's not going very well. It's taking me quite a lot of time because I'm trying to roll them really gently so that I crack the shell but don't damage the egg and then I'm trying to get a whip whilst wearing gloves on the edges of the cracks that are appearing mm. in order to be able to take them up cleanly and it's just taking me forever and there's bits of shell everywhere. And then the timer starts to go off because it's taking me so long. So the eggs and the water bath are ready and obviously ready to go. And I haven't finished my previous batch. And then the phone rings and I end up having a clinical conversation. I don't know who it was with. Um, basically a discussion about the fact that they need them for a patient and asking me a whole bunch of questions that I'm not entirely sure of the answers to. And I think it was possibly whether the quail eggs were the right eggs or not or whether we should be using different eggs. And, um, and basically I say that this is the decision we've made and I know how important they are and that I will get them there as soon as I can. So I kind of shove the first batch of eggs that I prepped through the hatch, which used to, is normally an electro uh, electrical kind of marking in my pool where they get to the electric wires, but has turned into a clear hatch into this medical mm -hmm. safety cabinet. So I pass them through there and I know I have to get on with the next batch. Um, and I'm think that there should be more eggs somewhere and I can't see anymore so I can't replace them into the water bath with other ones so I take the lot out that I've mm. got available to me, change my gloves and I start to peel the next batch but because they're straight from the water they're really burning my fingers and it's they're really hot and they're really soft and as I'm trying to peel them they start to explode because they're too soft and I end up with a yolk all over my hands and then Basically, the end of the dream is the phone starting to ring it and I can't answer because I've got yolk all over my fingers in these gloves and I can't mm. get to anything. 
And so I just sit there crying at my desk, trying to not get yoked with my face. It's effectively my everywhere. Right, thank you very much, Elaine. So uh, just for all of the people listening, so we've had a dream which is in Elaine's normal hospital workplace. And in that workplace, there's the normal medical bath, or, which is actually, it isn't usually on your desk, but you've got a medical bath on the desk. And rather than, rather than the bath heating uh, reagents or other samples, it's heating quail eggs. And Elaine at the same time has a box of quail eggs. What colour's the box, by the way? So the box is transparent plastic. Great, okay. So it's a transparent supermarket box of uh, yeah. quail eggs. Quail. And you have been peeling those ones, but you then peel the ones which have just come out of the medical bath, the small yeah. medical bath, the white medical bath. Yeah. And you're peeling those, but they're because they're hot, they're very soft. And so the yellow oat yolk is going over your fingers. Yeah. And meanwhile, you've got a purple uh, rug, did you say? Was it it's a sort of blanket over your lap? So you've got a purple blanket over your lap at the same time. Um, right. Uh, were there any other colours? In the thing there was the yellow of the yolk there was the you had post-it notes so the egg they were real like that really distinctive blue in my yes. mind i mean my phone's black but yes you're, you're, <laughs> yes the phone that you've got to answer because people are are rushing you about the patients is is black you've got the they're they're light blue, aren't they? The eggs, is that right? Is that yeah. what uh, quail eggs are like? They're light blue. And you've also got... Every space of the office, I think, is the main thing. Sorry, uh, could you say that again, please? The very white space that is the office with kind of the right, white... Of course. Yes. Oh, and which, what colour's the desk? I didn't ask that. The, the desk is white, the room is white. The, the bath for the um, samples is white. Yeah. And are you wearing anything over your face or any, are you wearing a white coat or medical coat? I'm wearing my standard work kind of gear, which is, I don't know, fairly smart, probably black outfit from memory. Um, right. Yeah, probably like a black cardigan, a black top, but you can't really see because the blanket's quite high. Uh, but yeah, I'm not wearing the lab coat. Yes, you're not wearing a white coat. It's a black car cardigan. Right. Okay. Okay. And so you've got the yellow oak, uh, yolks of those. There's two lots of eggs. And the blue gloves. And the blue gloves, which are... And are you wearing... The, you're wearing the blue gloves because you're peeling yeah. the eggs. Yeah. And these are the very thin medical type gloves. That you're wearing and it's quite hot to your fingertips because some of them you've just got them out of the bath yeah. great okay um i'm just wondering whether julie would like it said one more time or whether i should ask no, her. I'm okay, no. julie's okay um okay so i'm going to ask um uh what we now do is we just have questions only about the dream itself because what we're trying to do is to get as much detail as there is about the dream. So you've got a bath which is bubbling with the eggs. And that's just normal water, is it, in, in there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we've got um, the white walls. And you're sitting at the white desk. And you don't have anything over your face. No. I'm just sitting in my big black chair. <clears throat> yes. And the people who phone you, you know that the eggs are important for the patients. That's what yes. that's about, is it? Yeah, they're definitely for treatment. How quail eggs would ever be used for treatment, I don't know. But in my dream, they were definitely some form of treatment. Right, okay. And do you know what tre what, what are these people being treated for? Do you know that? The sarcoid COVID thing, so obviously what people with COVID-19. I see. So these are phone calls 
to say that these eggs are needed for the COVID-19 patients. Yeah. And new treatments that we're trialling in yes. ways that you Yes. Were. I see, I see. Right. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just going to ask uh, whether anybody worldwide has got questions at the moment, just so to remind everyone, uh, we we only are interested in questions about the um, the dream itself, rather than anything to do with their relationship to waking life. Um, any questions out there regarding the? And Julian might have in some as well. Um, uh, we've got a, a comment that yellows that a pus colour as well as being a, a sort of. A, a good egg colour. It's a it's a medical <laughs> colour in itself, as as well. So the eggs are just a blue. Is that right? That they were just yeah, blue petals. Sorry? I think blue with like brownish petals, aren't they? At least in my mind, that they look like. Um, yeah, they're just blue with brownish petals. Yeah, and they were just like blue petals. Yeah, quail eggs. So I don't actually know. I have no idea where the quail bits come from. But in my mind, they're kind of like a light blue with like a brown petally. Dashing. Yes. Yes, they're light blue with a with a um, uh, brown speckles on them, aren't they? Yes. Okay. We we've had a question saying, are there any noises in the room? No, it's really quiet. Which is why when the phone goes and the timer goes, it's such kind of a sharp jolt to what you're trying to do because I'm obviously focusing really hard on trying to get this really delicate job done mm. and then it's <clears> shock <throat> when you get the noise of either the timer or the phone. Yes, so it's it's really quite quiet but you're being um I was about to say the word ha harassed along, you know, but you're you're being sort of um, asked to get a move on, on on the eggs because they've got a medical use for people. Um, is the office private? Is it just your own? I, th I think because yes, you, yes, fine. and you'd said it's really quite a small white office anyway, yeah. and so it would yeah. just be for. In that they have to stand. <laughs> so uh, sorry, say that again. Right. Okay. Yes. If there was, if there was another person in there, it, it wouldn't be possible. So it's a very sort of enclosed, white space, and um, you've got uh, the bath. Anybody else with pale blue with brown speckles? Somebody's confirmed for um, uh, quail eggs. Yes, that's quite, quite true. Um, any other questions from out there? You've, you're, you're holding on to these eggs and trying to peel them. The, the yolk is going all over the place. Yeah, I suppose Boy. the only other thing to mention is obviously I wear red glasses, which is what I'm trying to push up as I'm crying and not get yolk onto my face. Right, yes, yes, you've got red glasses on. So Elaine's got... Um, red glasses and she's using the tops of the gloves to try to, to, try to pop, push these um, glasses back up, uh, back up near the top. Right. Yes. Um, OK. Um, I don't have any more questions, I think, about the about the scene. Um, if I could just summarise it, you are you are there sitting at your desk and you've got a um is it made of wool the uh the blanket it's like fleece yeah so um oh you see i'm rubbish at these things um yeah so a really soft kind of wool right yes okay and that's one color just one color yeah right. Lock of kind of cabri staring up double yes so that's a purple cover that you've got over you the top of you is is black it's a black yeah. jumper and then you've got your red glasses on yeah. and 
you have in front of you the white medical hot water bath which is heating up quail eggs and you also have a transparent box of these light blue with brown spotted eggs. And you are peeling those as well as then later on taking out the ones from the hot water and peeling those ones. Yeah. And it's at that point that the yolk is um, going all over the, over the place. And you've got over your head at, at the desk, you've got a calendar uh, one day at a time calendar is that right yes with shoes on it with shoes all oh, right oh, i see so it's got shoes as the sort of decoration of yeah, the calendar so been, um, yeah so each <coughs> is a new pair of shoes and so in my dream it was a big pair of red zaletta new heels it's like a v and a calendar I understand. Right. Oh, I see. So it's red stiletto heels as the um, as the uh, what, what's the word? The picture, the decoration, which is on the calendar. Oh, OK. Do you, you, you wouldn't remember what day or month it would say on the calendar. It would probably just say that. I think it would probably April, but I would just be guessing. Right. OK. But we know that it's got these red stiletto heels on the um, uh, the picture for the calendar. And you've also got, is it yellow post-it notes? Yes. Yeah. Yellow and pink. Yellow and pink post-it notes. Great. OK. Yellow and pink post-it notes. Thank you. Um, somebody has uh, asked, do you have any direct emotions or feelings for any of the items? in the dream or for the dream overall? Um, so I had a lot of frustration at the eggs. <laughs> so I suppose I am quite a precise person. And so at the start mm. of the dream, it's all about like that precision and that kind of gentle practice, which is what kind of science and medicine is all about. And then it kind of just gains momentum, at which point you're kind of just doing your best. Mm. But needs to happen now and so you, you know it, it's then frustrating that you're kind of dealing with this thing that isn't doing what you'd like it to do right so one of the main emotion is is frustration during it okay which is added to by having the the phone calls asking where the eggs are so yeah okay <laughs> um and i'm just wondering whether any of our audience any more of our audience have got any more questions about the actual uh, dream. We don't have any more coming in at the moment. So what we could do in that case is we could move on to the next stage, which, which occurs, and this is before we, um, uh, and this is before we uh, ask you to tell us about what had been happening. Was the dream, the dream was about a week ago, was it? Sunday night was it I think okay great well we we what we'll do is very shortly just ask you you know what was going on in your life work home whatever prior to the dream you know in the days going up for the dream what we do very very briefly um, is just ask the people who are joining us uh, from around the world if anybody if this dream happened to them what it would make them feel about themselves or about the dream. Uh, so this for Elaine, it doesn't necessarily have any connection to Elaine. It's just if is this is just to involve everybody. And so that you can see Elaine, that everybody else is into the dream and is briefly thinking about it in terms of their own lives. Uh, however, once that brief stage is over, we'll return the dream to you and we'll only be concerned with your life and, and your dream. Uh, somebody has, with a smiley face, said Easter eggs. That for them it would have a, a uh, connection to Easter. Um, I, I must admit, when, I, when, you, when you said that you'd uh, had a dream about quail's eggs I personally I have peeled quail's eggs 
and but I've only peeled the, the hard ones and they are extremely difficult to peel they're very very delicate and it really all of this did really remind me of the delicacies of medical treatment of people and the needing to be very very precise with uh, with what's being done so uh, it was the precision of dealing with quail's eggs that hit me from the dream but it also when I when you said the dream and when you'd said the dream earlier um, having the eggs as soft makes it even worse because they there is then even more difficult to um, uh, peel them so to me if I'd had this dream it would really be something about precision um, somebody else has uh, come in with a statement I would share your frustration at not being able to save the patients or possibly the world and so there's a um, if it had happened to them they would be concerned for the patients and whether they're being able to save them another person says to them it would be an egg on face or embarrassing dream and another person has mentioned that they had grown up with an ornithologist father and so that was their connection to it <laughs> um, right I don't know if you've got any thoughts about those those things that that were said Easter precision um, saving people desperate to save people um, embarrassment egg on face and ornithology? The position and the frustrations part is what I immediately thought, but it was Easter Sunday last so maybe it was just the fact that the lots of Easter eggs on TV. I'm dairy free, so I didn't have one. Um, right. uh, <laughs> maybe I secretly wanted an egg, I don't know. Yes. And here you've got lots of them. Yes, it was, yes, it was at East, literally Easter time that this was happening about the, um, the blue and brown spotted quail's eggs, yes. Um, right, okay. So those are some responses as if, as if that dream that you'd had had happened to other people. But what we do now is, and, and this is a standard procedure here, which is uh, used in, in order to investigate dreams and their relationships. To waking life what we next do now is to return that dream to you and we now invite you to just say what had been on your mind during say the day right before the dream and the days before that or whether anything was on your mind as you fell asleep whether there had been any events in the day uh, how work had been how um home had been or, or just any conversation you'd, you'd had with people or anyone you'd seen spoken yeah. to on the phone or Skype or whatever or just anything that would have been part of your life in the, the day or days before the dream. So Sunday was a tricky day well to be honest the whole lead up to Sunday was tricky so it was the um, Friday and Saturday were the 10th anniversary of my deaths of my sister and my niece, um, which obviously we would normally spend with family and we couldn't. Um, and then on Sunday, um, I got a phone call from family um, with a relative who had just been diagnosed with uh, COVID-19 and they... Right wanted to know if they could go and visit and say goodbye and I had to advise them not to because they had underlying medical conditions mm. so I had to advise them not to go and visit who subsequently passed away on Wednesday this week um, and so I suspect for me there was a little bit of my I can deal with anything at work mm. when mm. I got to Club and Green mm. it's quite unique to then have to make those decisions and give that advice as a lane mm. on, uh, on a Sunday afternoon about, you know, those are quite hard, you know, you have conversations about do you want the advice that I should give you or do you want the advice that you want to hear? Mm. And those two things are not necessarily the same. Mm. Um, and I think 
that I suppose in the recent months of everything happening in terms of SARS-CoV-2, there's been quite a lot of that kind of inflation of professional life into every day life. Everybody wants you to give them it by that there is no shutting off from it anymore. Every conversation you have is mm. people wanting to understandably learn more, educate more, be told what to do. And that's quite a that's a bit of a shift from like you always have the odd conversations, right? Somebody always phones up going, Oh Ed has got this what do you think we should do? I've mm. been given this antidote, but it's not constant. Mm. Um and so there is just no shutting off from it in a way that you would normally have. And I suppose that for me, it felt like some real culmination of that kind of no longer being able to separate professional and personal. Yes. Because you've got those concentration of things from personal life happening of illnesses yeah. and... And death. So yes, I'm sorry to hear those those things. And some people have have uh, commented with emojis of of that. Of, uh, yes. Oh, I see. So that had been happening around the time that you'd had that dream. Yes. Yeah, so Sunday was the night that I had the dream, and obviously I'd had the conversation about sick people come Sunday evening. Um, mm. I had quite a lot of phone calls from a number of, you know, really good friends saying, you know, what do I do? And mm. normally you would bounce a lot of this stuff back to people, to professional clinicians, because actually you don't want your friend giving you difficult medical advice. Mm. You want your be your friend, mm. and it adds an extra level of complication when actually you're giving that difficult advice to somebody and you're suddenly becoming their doctor and their friend at the same time. Um, and so normally you would bounce it back, but actually in this particular circumstance, you are the best person to give them the guidance that they need. Mm. It's just that you're always aware that sometimes there's backlash related to that guidance. Yes. Because people are understandably emotional, right? This is an emotional, scary, time for like all of us I mean I think you just get used to dealing with it mm. in the job that I do and so but you it is important to be able to step away from that and there's less being able to step away than you normally would have yes and these and these and so you're, you're getting phone calls from people like you say, you would normally be able to pass them over to another professional, but with the current situation, they don't have, there's not enough professionals around to ask. So they're asking you. So those calls were all like in the dream by, by phone, were they, or by Skype, or, or how, do, how do people contact you? They're all on my kind of standard landline that sits in my office. I see. So they were contact, these were family contacting you at, I was going in my real life, they phoned up the mobiles, yeah. They were phoning on the mobiles, yes, in real life. Whereas in the office, in the actual dream, it was... It's my it, desk phone. It, it was that, yes. Well, yes, well, I'm sorry to hear it was so tough. I think it's the reality of where we are now. And it's a very strange thing that I think as an infection control professional you've understood this kind of coming reality for months so psychologically mm. you're quite further down the line whereas I think a lot of people are only now really beginning to realise the impacts on them as individuals and so I mean in many ways you know, this is my job this is what you train yes. for right and, so, and I've known since December that this might be where we end up whereas mm. everybody else is now having to adjust it's a bit of a different thing Yes, right, right, I see what you mean, yes. Um, the, the, the issue of quail's eggs, where do you, have you seen quail's eggs or had quail's eggs or have anything that's at all? Actually, so, <laughs> the one thing, I hadn't even thought about this 
Um, let me. Um, so there's a company called the KK Chocolates that mm. do salted caramel eggs. And they are little eggs in trays. And I had brought some for my husband the week before. Um, I had not thought about that at all. But uh, they painted um, chocolate to look like little quail's mm. eggs, mm. which I hadn't thought in any way. So maybe that's it. Um, I hadn't even thought about it. Right. So you'd got quail's eggs. Uh, sorry, you'd got chocolate eggs for your husband. Chocolate are made to look like quail's eggs. I see. Which I've completely forgotten until you just asked me. I see. And what what was the the occasion for getting your husband eggs, which, you know, which happened to be quail's eggs? What what was the... uh... We're in lockdown and we need nice ones. Ah, I see, yes. So this was a a present to do with you know comfort or or you know sort of yeah. making the lockdown less um, uh, so horrible. So there's actually treats, and so you you did get these types of treats. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, I see. So we've worked out where they came from. Yeah. Yes. Sure right. Although it's um, the odd thing in the dream is that the quail's eggs are somehow Not. medicinal there yeah not that at all but that's why i think the I, the imagery i mean the fact that they look similar to quail's eggs i don't know if they are but maybe that's the only thing i can think of because i don't have any in the house mm. i've seen them build on master chef and other cookery programs but that's my only exposure and i've eaten them but i've not ever um tried to cook with them Right, I see. So you've got, right, so we've had chocolate type of quail's eggs. Um, The idea of needing small eggs or eggs or something medicinally to give to people, or, because you you must be doing some delicate things with patients some of the time and giving those, giving... I mean, I suppose a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is basically trying to work out the best way to manage patients and the best advice to give. Um, And so there's quite a lot of that kind of, I can see a lot of that position and that, Mm. that do things right is a big thing currently, Mm. because obviously you need to make a lot of decisions based on ever-changing information so mm. you're trying to make a decision that's best for everybody that uses the latest evidence that's coming out every day and you're constantly in a very changing situation it's not like normally where you have months and you take months to write a piece of guidance and then that guidance is there for two years and you train everybody up and you gently kind of get every and you negotiate and you get everybody on board there's none of that mm. um like guidance yeah, again, changed last night at six o'clock on a Friday that we're now all definitely trying to scrabble around and adjust for so that everyone's safe over the weekend so that when we go back on Monday, you know, and that's just mm. one all mm. now. And so usually medicine is so evidence-based and we take such a long time to make choices. Mm. Mm. Whereas like, I feel like I make 15, 20 decisions a day, which it's... It's quite a different pace, mm. and it's the pace we need to be working at, but it, it's a very intense <clears throat> experience to know that you're living through for not, you know, it's not just a week. You don't have an outbreak that's going on for a week, and you basically do 20-hour days, and you just mm. go, okay, done. This has been going on for me for three months at least, and it's likely to go on for at least another three at this kind of pace, and so it's, it's quite an exhausting process to yes yes i see i see what you mean and this this idea of you have lots of decisions or lots of actions to do is a bit is is that a bit similar to the dream where you've got lots of the eggs that you've got to peel you know you've got to look where you get your next set Uh, that kind of you've got a lot of you've got a lot of that responsive stuff 
that you're doing in terms of response to the time or response to the call. It's kind of immediate firefighting, but actually what you want is the stuff that you don't necessarily have, which I can really think is probably part of the really good randomized control trial that would tell me what drug I should be using. Mm. Um, you know, I, there's this absence that you're aware of, but you, I don't quite know how to fix. Yes, and like you said in the, in the dream, you you didn't know where the next lot of eggs were going to come from. So yeah. it's, you know, you need all of these things medically, and you don't know where. We don't know where the things will arrive. Yes. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yes. Um, one person has said, um, and now this might not be just for you, just just for you to think of, is that all of those photos of the virus that look so beautiful, because a lot of them are blue circles with, with red on them. But I don't know whether that's at all relevant. See, it's a coronavirus and it's named after the sun. I mean, I suppose yellow could be, um, because it's named like a, a sun coronavirus. Oh, it's the reason it's got its name is its viral structure under EM. I had not really thought about it. No. OK, right. But it's just an idea that uh, we are seeing pretty pictures of, of, of the thing. So and you've got the, the, uh, the pretty eggs in the... Um, uh in the dream uh one other person has has mentioned that to quail uh is another word is, is a, a rare word meaning to feel fear and i don't know whether you but, but oh, if yeah. you don't quail and fear, don't you is it quail yeah, yeah. yeah. That. i speak it is. scared i feel frustrated mm. but you know i suppose it's easily it's not necessarily that they're massively different feelings from each other. Hmm. Yes. Okay. So anyway, there's an alternative um, meaning to the word or uh, uh, meaning to the word quail. Yes, I see. Um, so, anything else in waking life? Uh, did Did you and your husband watch any films or um, anything I else happening on that week on that weekend? <laughs> On Sunday, it feels like it was a. <laughs> Is it cut out? No. Oh, I hope not. Oh. It's my fault. Right. Um, <laughs> um, we'll have watched stuff because we're big movie fans. I can't remember what it was though. Mm. I think it was Magic of the Ring. Yeah. Yeah, Fellowship of the Ring. But I'm not sure how that fantasy Tolkien stuff necessarily. Yeah, and before that, I you know with my sister, we'd watch Pretty Woman, Serendipity. Mm. Mm. And none of which I think are necessarily linked, potentially. Although the shoes might be, who knows? Yes. Oh, I see. oh and were the shoes ones which, are they actually on your calendar at work? Yeah. They are. The red stiletto shoes so they're actually that's actually the real the yeah. real calendar great yes okay um uh okay so i'm wondering whether we should if there's no more questions coming from around the world about uh i think we've got quite a bit about what had been happening to you with the delicacy and all of the patients and the the need for extreme speed with dealing with so many people and the medical situation and also the um, finding out where the eggs came from yes. so, which is which is uh, which is which is good to to know that so um, what I'm going to do next is I will what we do next in the procedure and this was the procedure that a um, a psychiatrist psychoanalyst devised about 40 years ago for for um, relating dreams to waking life and what he wanted was lots of lay people to have the skills to do it so that it wasn't done as a psychotherapy it was just done for people who've had a dream that intrigues them and to try and uh, see where the dream came from and nothing more than that it's just a, a method for appreciating the dream so he had various stages 
in this. Oh, somebody said about red shoes, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, but uh, which is interesting. <laughs> we are definitely not in Kansas anymore. We're not in Kansas anymore, yes, with yeah, all of this. True. This, yes, and no place like home, yes. Um, right, well, thank you for that comment as well. So what I'm going to do now is what the, the next stage in the procedure is I read back the dream to you. And if there's anything that you think of about the dream uh, that you want to add some more detail in, or if it gives you any thoughts about your waking life that you want to comment on, then just uh, but, uh, just interrupt while I'm um, speaking. Is that okay? So what he wanted us to do was to have a, a period in which I would, um, in which somebody would uh, say back the dream to you. And then after that, we'll try and tie the dream to your, your recent waking life at that time. Okay, okay. so I am going to, I've got it, I've got it written down. So I'm just going to. Okay, great. So here's Elaine's uh, dream and somebody's just commented on the, the dangerousness of stilettos and uh, uh, daggers. So, yes, for me, I fall over in my bed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, they're dangerous, as in they're precarious, as as well yes. as um, as well as as pointed. Yes. Um, okay. So, um, in your dream, you're working at your normal workspace, which is you've got a desk, which is next to the door, but there's not really much, much that much space there apart from that so you've got your back to the door it's a white room white desk and you're in your black desk chair which is a sort of um, James Bond villain type chair uh, which is very large and black um, although it's nothing although it's not like waking life because you wouldn't have this in your in your office you've got a purple furry blanket on which normally lives on your sofa um, at home so that's across your knees and it's also trailing on the floor so that's the sort of that's the purple furry blanket so in a way you're sort of trapped by that by having that over you yeah. your desk your desk unlike in real life is clear apart from there's a lamp on it oh is the lamp on or off um, i'm lamp. shining like spotlight onto the eggs that i'm working on Okay, so you've got a, your, a clear desk apart from a lamp um, and post-it notes, which are yellow and it was some yellow and pink post-it notes under the shelves above your head, which reminds you of what you need to be doing. And there's also a, a one day at a time calendar, which has got red stiletto shoes on for the decorations. And that sits in front of you on the shelving. Behind the lamp, there's, which is normally, normally it's solid there, but there's a hatch that leads to an electrical space with a transparent door and a handle. And it looks like a hatch that you would pass um, things into a medical safety cabinet. On the left of you, where your in tray normally sits, is now a scientific water bath which is white on the outside and full and bubbling with a box of blue gloves, sit, medical gloves sitting next to it. Yes. Floating within the water bath in the flotation tray, instead of the normal reagents, there's a set of a dozen quail eggs. And the quail eggs are light blue with brown speckles on. The back of your desk is covered with electric electronic timers and these are square time square digital timers to tell you when to take the eggs out yes at the start of the dream you're wearing a pair of gloves and you have a set of eggs in front of you in what looks like a clear standard waitrose quail egg box you're trying to peel the eggs wearing gloves these are the blue gloves 
Um, you don't remember having anywhere to discard the shells, so the shells are possibly all around you. Yeah. You're finding it very difficult to get enough grip on the eggs and you're rolling them gently to try and make some cracks appear. And you just can't manage to get a grip on the cracks in the shell in order to get them off cleanly. You're getting there, but it's taking you ages. Then the timer starts going off and you're trying to chase, trying to get the eggs out of the water bath while still having the previous batch on the go. And then the phone rings. You don't know who it was, but there was a discussion about the fact that they need the eggs in order to treat a patient and they're being asked and you're being asked a bunch of questions that you thought you knew the answers to, but you're not sure. And these eggs, were, whether these eggs were going to do what was needed. But you know how important the eggs are, um, despite not being sure whether they, they will work there. So you shove the first lot of eggs into the clear door of the hatch, aware that they need more doing to them. And you get on with trying to peel the ones that have just come out of the water bath. You're also looking around as you know you need to get the next batch on and you can't see any and there's no time to get any. You then change your gloves and start trying to peel the next batch but they're still warm and they are hurting your fingers. Not only that but because they're still hot they're too soft and some of them start to implode as you're trying to peel them. You've got yellow yolk all over your gloves and you need to save as many as you can. Then the phone starts ringing and you can't answer it as you're covered in yolk and bits of shell. And you sit there crying at your desk, trying to peel the rest, crying and pushing your glasses up with your wrists so you don't get yolk on the lenses. Um, right, is, is that all okay as a yeah, I think full so. description of the dream. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, uh, it's it's got a large feeling of frustration in it. Yeah. And and of the need to rush for the sake of these patients in a situation where where normally you wouldn't be rushing quite so much. Yeah, very much. Um, and, um, I think it was unusual for me to remember something so clearly and for it to be quite so odd. Yes. It's quite an odd thing to wake up from. Yes. Uh, odd, you mean to have so quite so much franticness? Uh, um, I mean? think odd to have clarity over something that um, feels like quite a strange dream to have had. Mm. Like, like I, I often problem solve in my sleep. So I'll often like um, things that I need to be fixed, but then I wake up with an answer, not a weird visual about X. Yes, right, I see, yes. So I, I can imagine it was, um, well, in a way stressful in the dream because you're, you're, you're having to do so much and you don't yes. know whether or not the next batch of eggs, which you well, know- Well, it's really hard to be problem solved, but with something that makes no sense. So you don't get that kind of, I don't know, resolution when you wake up because I feel like I've cracked some things that I've been trying to think about because I was trying to sort something out in a dream that was just completely not something mm. that was solvable for me. Whereas normally I'll, I will quite often dream about a scientific or medical problem and actually wake up with a, oh, well, of course, that's how I need to fix it, mm. which... Very much not what this was about. Yes, 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 I see what you mean. Yes, it's actually a bit interesting that you mentioned the word cracked just then mm. because that's what you're trying to do with the eggs and and it's something that can't be cracked, which which coming at it as a scientist, you know, that's the whole point of things is you've got to crack the, the yeah. puzzle. Make, fix it. Fix it. Fix it now. Yeah, and here you are with a with an un uncrackable, literally, literally 
uncrackable because it's um in fact you know i mean it's that, that is interesting because you've you have mentioned for your waking life you know you're now put in the position with with friends relatives sort of thing of needing to advise when you you wouldn't normally do that because there's because other there's other friends. people to do it yes and there's there's normally the other people who are there to crack the problem um, yes, yeah, so, wow, that is interesting, isn't it? Yes. Uh, right. So what, what we do now is we move on to the, the last stage of this um, procedure that uh, this psychiatrist, psychoanalyst Montague Orman devised. And he said this is the time at which we try to do links between the dream and your recent waking life at the time. And... Uh, try and make sense of the dream in, okay. and for him it was all in terms of what really he emphasized was what was on your mind as you were falling asleep what was unfinished what was uh still a concern or what what was a something emotional that may have been on your mind either as you were falling asleep or from the previous days before that and um so so you mentioned quite a a bit you know that there's so much going on at work was one of the things and you don't stop so you I don't so it used to be easier to have like a weekend and you can't mm. in all good faith have weekends anymore mm. because because things change all the time you have to constantly kind of be available because there are things that potentially only you can have the opinion on. Mm. But we all have slightly different specialisms. Not everybody, even within our team, and we have a great, amazing team, but like I have different specialisms than my other colleagues. And so there are things that, you know, fall much more into my area of, I would probably know that off the top of my head rather than then having to go away and do 12 hours of reading um, that mean that you are constantly tapped up and you're constantly tapping others up going, mm. actually, what should I do? What's the way I made this call in the right call? Mm. Yes. And in, and in the dream, not only are you trying to make the call, but you don't even know if you've got enough of the eggs coming along to to do it for and you're getting the phone calls in from people in and the there's dream, a lot yes. of in terms of work because everyone globally is trying to get hold of the same stuff there's an awful lot of constantly going actually so I would normally do this is mm. this equivalent is this good enough will this do what I need mm. it to do so there's a lot of that constant changing of decision making mm. you know taking the swabs that you would take for diagnosis right the fact that there's a global shortage of the, the standard swabs that everyone would use um and so now you're trying to go okay so well these are all the other swabs on the global market what of them are you know mm. are equivalent? and they are equivalent it's just we've always ordered the things that you always order um, because those are the things that are set up for procurement. And so, mm. But there's a lot of kind of thinking about constantly switching things up in a way that you wouldn't normally. Yes, right. No, I can see. And and the people online could see as well the, you know, just how, how much work there is to do in that and responsibility and stress with, with it all. So, and it's one, one of the interesting things, or one of the reasons we're doing this is because it appears that it's not just people's, sleeps then affected by all of the responsibility and stresses but it's going into people's dreams as well and they're yeah. having dreams about having to do tasks of immense precision which are also having oh it's all right <laughs> that, 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 that got uh, cut off a second the having dreams of immense precision in order to sort of solve the the problems for these people and we're not even sure why the the procedure we're doing is that's how the brain gets because 
because like you're working such long hours and because you're always on it's almost the only time you really get to stop thinking about it actively. yeah yes and like you said family and friends friends and relatives can have there'll be issues there but also when you're asleep it's not stopping so as we've found out from this one and we're finding out from other other dreams as well wow um uh yes yeah, somebody else has, has has just put in with cracked it so i think they spotted the same um the same the same thing so and it, and it does seem really appropriate to have a, a type of egg that it is actually very difficult to peel it's not like your normal hen's egg which are big and which will have a massive yeah. crack around them and uh, yeah. instead they're really really tiny and 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 fiddly which is sort of medically appropriate um as well so um yes i've i think those are most of the connections that i can see and and you've you've mentioned some as well and and other people i don't, I don't know whether there's anything else to uh so the one thing that intrigued together. me was the blanket but I don't oh, know yes, if that's... Oh, yes, you got the blanket. Oh, so shape. I actually, like, I love my office. Many other people don't because they find it quite claustrophobic. But I love it because it's a quiet place where I can just get on with things. Mm. And I just didn't know whether that was, like, a symbol of the comfort that I find in actually normally being there, even though this dream was quite stressful. Or, or, yeah, it, it was the one thing for me that felt really... Like, the scientific equipment in my office is weird, but I can kind of understand that because my thought processes are mm. scientific medical, so I can kind of understand how they, um, but I found the appearance of my home life in my office, that, but maybe that, that's what it is about the fact that my home life and my yes. professional life are increasingly becoming slightly intertwined because of the fact that my work infection work is now affecting everybody at home it was yes. where you are. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a real, the blanket's a real symbol of home. A comfortable symbol of home. And, and all of the home domestic, domestic stuff has had to be imported into, into the lab and the, the medical environment. That's, that's quite something, actually, isn't it? Having the... The blankets from there and it's it's brought into the dream it's it's not there waiting for you at home yeah it's one of the most comfortable things at home has had to be brought in yeah wow it, i'm terrified they're gonna make me sleep on my office floor both of which are completely valid <laughs> <laughs> yes and you've also, I mean, the other domestic thing, of course, was the quail eggs, you know, or the, 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 the eggs that you'd bought, the chocolate eggs that you'd bought to be specifically homely. Yes. And home. And even they are ending up in, in work. So. Yeah. It really is a, a mixture of, you know, work, work and and the most relaxing domestic aspects of home coming together. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that is, that is um, interesting. Um, oh, and somebody else has also put that it's the office that's come into your home. Um, yes. Oh yes, and you'd be working at home. Because I've had this cough, and so it's not so basically. <laughs> it's massive, but I'm doing all of this in my home space, mm. rather than in my office. Yes, right. But the the actual office in the dream was your work office at yeah, at work. Well, Yes, and, um, and and it's coincidentally a room that used to be a bathroom, did you say? Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. 
so it's a, a real mix. Yes. Oh well. No one ever finds you in the bathroom. That's true. Oh, that is interesting. So it's um. Well, that that to me is most of it. A lot of it tied together. I don't know whether any of that sounded a bit um, as if you hadn't thought of it before or was novel or. I hadn't really thought about the blanket stuff, to be honest. Mm. I hadn't really thought that through. So that was really interesting. Mm. And the eggs was, yeah, although no, they I are hadn't... real quail eggs, the link with a domestic thought about that comfort of bringing that. We'll come and eat them later, though. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, it's just all the medically delicate thing. Um, already, somebody's put that eggs are what the vaccine is grown in. For influenza. Oh, for yeah. influenza. Not for corona. But ah, for, for, not for corona, but, but for, for influenza. Um, it's a bird-based virus. So normally for influenza, what we would be doing now is inoculating a load of chicken eggs in right. order to grow the, va the virus vaccine strain. Yes, oh, I see, I see, I see. But there's, with some leeway for what dreams are allowed to do, then there's there's always, that's an interesting suggestion that the, yeah. if it was a different type of virus, yeah. eggs, um, eggs would be very relevant. Rona will be to make a vaccine for Yes. And somebody else says, the need for comfort yeah, in a normally comfortable environment, it's suddenly filled with pressure and frustration. Um, and s somebody said about egg yolk being all spilled, it reminds her of um, the image of tears with a spilled yolk. Or is, is a possibility is a, a link there and somebody else saying how quails are wild and untamed like I quite like the idea of me being wild and untamed yeah, yes, yes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes well this person said about all like the untamed or uh, wild animals at the market in Wuhan so they're sort of a yeah they're a wild I suppose you could say that the virus is wild and untamed and the at the minute. The virus is wild, yes, yes. Oh, uh, well. Well, we've had some very nice thoughts from people worldwide, which we're grateful for, for, for tying everything together. Um, and that's great that in the discussion of it, we managed to find a few things that might not have been obvious uh, to it. And... Yeah. Um, and one of the things we're working on is how good it is for, how useful it is for, it may be use, it may be um, interesting to have a dream that sort of points out things about one's own waking life, but that in telling the dream, you've, you've shown us the degree of franticness and stress and precision that's going on. Yeah, I mean, I think it's At a At the really same time. That people think they realize that the medical professionals are people too and we are all dealing with stuff that goes on at home mm. um, and I'm lucky I have an amazing family and all of those things but um, mm. you know you are still a person when you put on your PPE and you go into work and you deal with the pressures of work yes. um, and I think because a lot of people when they deal with medical professionals now will that these medical professionals will feel even more distant because they're wearing face coverings you won't see their faces mm. and so even easier to think that there's this big void and that they're not people yes and you think reminding people that we are and we are doing this because we care passionately about the person that we're dealing with even though we all feel horrible that we don't have the time that we would like to be able to spend and devote mm. And so I think that's a really important message that we want people to remember that we're doing this because we actually care about everybody that's in front of us. Yes, yes. Yes, no, well, people are, appreciate that. And I think most people know that. Yes, so that's, but it's good to be reminded of it. And in some respects, the dream, act, the dream reminds us as well um, of that. Um, well, thank you very much, 
Elaine. Um, I don't know whether I can change your camera around yet to Julia's still painting a bit, but we've. Mm. I could turn the camera around because of. Mm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see whether or not the Skype camera will go the other way. Ah. I think perhaps the image. My husband has talked to me today that it would be reversed it and turn it around if you tap your image. Ah. Um. Oh, you're right. Yes, I do a right click and it does it. And there we go. And if I move these things, everybody online can see it's not quite finished yet. Um, That's amazing. Though. But there's <laughs> Julia. Oh, now let me get. Oh, sorry. That's uh, I just uh, that was attached to something. That's great. So how does that? Um, I'm just going to bring the blanket, I think, rolling down here. Yes, Julia's still got a bit to do because she wants to... Um, let me move this up there. Is that okay? Can you still hear? I can, yes. Oh, that's great. Well, this is the I haven't I wanted to bring the blanket sort of down here into this paragraph, but these are the tray of eggs. Yeah. And this is you with your blue gloves on at your woven chair. And that's the blanket on your lap. And it says here, um, do not know connection with an idea ill matched as our waking judgment, um, which I thought was kind of poetically about what you were saying about how you normally um you know would would find uh resolutions to ideas in your dreams and so that this is an ill matched ill matched with your waking judgments so i've just sort of found that there these which i haven't quite finished these eggs are all the zeros or the, all the all the letter o's in this bit of text became the eggs that are in the bubbly water and this is the packet of eggs here with some yolk but then the main part is these blue gloves holding the eggs and in here it says um undergone displacement changed no altered by dream intact which is quite nice that's the egg and then it says here i may feel dream problem and here disgusting situation on the other hand and sometimes delighted and that was just i was thinking of the disgusting situation of the um, yoke on the on the hand and I sort of found that in the text um, this state distincts distinctly as regards by patient the sufferer um, and then here resisting dreams quality of the intensity is in the in the finger and here ideational contents while the effects have ideational content um, and over here as well, it was quite interesting in these, in these, um, in all of these eggs, it says judgment, judgment, superfluous, we have judgment. Um, multiply such examples from those is mean, merely dream thought, dream activity in the element, activity to the cooperation, um, um, all that original so that's all kind of in the box of eggs and that's you sitting there in your face it says dream dream in your face and then here <laughs> it says um feel is the blanket which is quite nice it says feel on the blanket and then inferior is written on your belly um and then ideational again so obviously in the text there's something about ideation in the text but um that's sort of popped up and then here the timers are um in dreams is all in, i found that made the timers there's the blue glove which i haven't finished and then the top and then the the arm of the um the arm of the lamp says the effect and that's the arm of the lamp which i'm just about to finish so it's not quite finished yet but um and just to just to remind people who are online because many of them would have seen us do this before but also to mention it to 
to Elaine that Julia picks the two pages because the shape of the text fits the number of scenes and, you know, fits, fits some of uh, the, um, what is it, the shape of what you've said in the sense of the, you know, there's the desk there and that type of thing. Mm. And so then... So while, that's the desk coming along here. And then while Julia's painting those things, she spots that there are words there that just happen to be there that Freud wrote and um, incorporates those words uh, into the painting, even though the words were not, the pages weren't chosen because of the words. The no, words, the words, the words come they're, second. They're a happening. sort of uh, serendipitous um, part of the artwork. But it's mm. it, to us and to, to people, it's quite nice that we've got this link to Freud, who was so interested in what are the memories and emotions that go into dreams. So that's the reason uh, why we're using his book on this, um, as well as the fact that we've got the publisher has allowed us to to make artworks out of the words with the, out of this particular edition of the. Yeah, interpretation of dreams it, they were the only ones who gave us so they they got us back, the back up, to it you know? they were very fast at saying yes they they could see the value of all of this um we've had somebody saying thank you dr elaine an amazing sharing yes another one thanks to elaine for working so hard in such crazily demanding yeah. circumstances yes um and another person saying um how he how he knows from uh the mental health field about how important personal contact is for patients and you know that's partly been what you've been talking about is the personal impact of all of this and how important how much you feel for the work as well as doing uh, the technical side of it for everyone for listening to me gabble on oh it's not we're not gabbling on at all because it's um the the reason uh the Montague Orman devised the method was that people would be very focused about telling the dream and then they'd be very focused about speaking about their working waking life you know which was partly a working life here and then the, the things can get tied together quite sort of um accurately oh in in the bubbly water as well it says I've just spotted it says fear of dream experienced intensity I don't know that's quite nice mm. But you'll be able to see those things when we, what we do after, once Julia's finished it, is what we'll do is we'll take a quick, we'll take a photograph of it. And that way we can put that online afterwards yeah, and then you'll be able to see that. And then what we do is once our offices are open, we do a very high definition scan of the artwork or a scan of the painting. And it's that high definition scan that can then be made into a larger artwork print and we will well, then get well, that to you and not Sorry? be quite so white anymore no, don't be quite so white anymore <laughs> right, um, yes. colors are my fault. oh <laughs> no that would be great yes no that would be wonderful if you had this on we have had people who've said this dream that they've said the painting they'll they're going to put on their wall so um that that would be great yes i would definitely put it in my bathroom Right. Ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that was something. Yes. I, did it say bathroom or toilet on the door? The bathroom. Bathroom. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put that in up there. Right. Yeah, I meant to ask you that. On call bathroom, in fact. On call, on call bathroom. bathroom. Oh, wow. Right. <laughs> ah. Well, thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you very much for this. And that, that was a fascinating dream. And um. Yes, that, that really was. And I'm very glad that you got in touch. And Al Alex had put us in touch, hadn't he? Because he'd, he'd um, and I'm really grateful to Alex Perkins for um, for well, having suggested you, just, yeah, suggested us your, to you. So uh, we just saw your, your, your dream on the internet and thought it looked really good. So lots of people are tweeting their dreams at the moment. So Yes, yeah. and we've had something in, what is it, Wired a few days ago, which was a long really thing. Sorry? A really good article. Oh, yes. Oh, did you see it? Or did I? I oh, great. Yes. <laughs> anyway. So thank you ever so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you very much, it. Elaine. And we will we'll be in touch because we'll, well, we'll put this up on the website later on. And Julia's very, I'm, I'm showing you Julia now so Julia can wave goodbye. Oh, yes, thank and, you very uh, much. Right. And, and uh, oh, I'll, 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 now everybody can see 
as well. And I will say thank you very much, Elaine. Thank you. And I'm going to say good. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. And I'm going to. Right. And I'll say goodbye to our. Saying goodbye to our worldwide audience now as well. Apologies for the technical hitches earlier on. We've been trying to make sure that the um, uh, that the Skype image could be put into the uh, Facebook feed, and we ju we've just about worked out how to do that. But we'll do that next time. So thank you all very much for being part of today's broadcast. We'll have another one soon uh, when. Um, another, when we, we get another health professional involved with the current pandemic to tell us their dream. So stay safe everybody and we'll be uploading the photograph of this to the website and also to Facebook very soon. Thanks so much everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.